in order for us to build games for any of the VR platforms out there that are based on Android, there are a few things we need to do. And what we'll do in this lecture is cover those things so that you can go through that process and then move on to the lectures that correspond to the platform or platforms that you will be targeting. Google Cardboard, Google Daydream, Gear VR are all based on Android and the steps that we'll cover in this lesson will take us towards the point where we can start actually testing the games in our phones. A quick overview of the process. We need to make sure that Android build support is um, in, in our Unity install. Also, we're going to be installing the Java SDK and the Android SDK and a bunch of Android packages. There's going to be a lot of downloading, so I hope that you have a good internet connection and a good hard drive because these things are quite heavy. And we're going to end up by setting up our phone for development and enable USB debugging, which is a something that you need so that your computer can speak to your phone via USB cable and send games to it so you can test your games on your phone. When you downloaded Unity, I'm hoping that you checked the option Android build support. But if you didn't, that's fine. You can always run the download assistant again or download it again from the download Unity again and then just make sure that you install the Android build support because that needs to be part of Unity for you to move any further. In Unity, we're going to go to Edit, Preferences, and then External Tools. And you will see an area that says Android, and it has a few fields that we are interested in. We're only interested in the first two fields, which are the location of your Android SDK and your Java SDK. Um, in order to get this, we're going to start with the looking at the Java one. You just click on the Download button, and that will take you to the Oracle website, where you can download the Java platform JDK that corresponds to your operating system. So you can download from there and it will take you to a page with a lot of options so that you can pick the one that corresponds to your operating system. So by, I'm using Windows here, but by no means this is only related to Windows. This is, applies to also Mac and Linux as well. So you can download the one that response to your system and just install it and take note of in which folder it was installed. You can just go with the default folder and write it down or copy or change it to a different folder, but you need to be able to, to find that folder later. So you've installed your Java SDK and then you enter your um, the location of the folder here. You, you go to browse and then you will find that location in your computer. So now let's talk about the Android SDK. Uh, to which, by the way, we will be taken to if we click on the download button here. So in the past, you could just install only the Android SDK, which was a bunch of command line tools that also came with a user interface that allowed you to download the different packages and to create emulators and to do a few things. So it was basically a mixture of command line tools and also a user interface, and that was great. But things have things have changed a little bit, and these days, the if you download the just the SDK, which you can do if you scroll all the way down on this page, you're not going to get any of the user interface tools. And I find it that to manage to download the packages on Android or to to manage my Android SDK, I do prefer to have a user interface. So. Um, Unless you're already an advanced Android developer, I would definitely not recommend to download just the SDK. Uh, so what I've, what I've done here is download the whole Android Studio suite, which is a very heavy, very comprehensive program, but it's the only way for us to get those, those UI tools and, and that is why I've downloaded that option. So once you click there, you will see different install instructions according to your operating system and, and you'll find the, obviously the most up-to-date install in, uh, instructions in there with a video as well. So you will download this and you need to make sure to select your the Android SDK, of course. Um, and also what's very important is the location of your Android SDK. As you can see, you will be able to set the location of your Android Studio, which you probably won't be using much unless you're into Android app development and the location of your Android SDK. So that is the location that we will then have to find in Unity. So keep that in mind. And don't copy the same values that I have because I've set up custom locations for my for my packages. So that will take a, a while to install and download. And then in Unity, um, you need to then make sure to enter both your 
Android SDK location. In my case, I put it on a different drive because I don't have more space in the C drive. And, uh, or I think, I'm not remember, I don't remember what the reason was why I chose that one, but uh, basically it's up to you to install it wherever you want in your computer. But just make sure that you enter the one, uh, the folder that corresponds to your computer, not to copy the ones that I have in here. All right, so you enter both the Android SDK and the Java SDK. Uh, but there are a few things we need to do with Android Studio. So go and open Android Studio, and then um, you might have to download the, uh, the latest SDK from there, you'll be prompt, and just make sure that you are choosing your location of the Android SDK. So there might, there might be a little bit more of downloading here. Then you'll finally be able to open Android Studio, but we're not done yet with it. Uh, on this home screen, go to configure and go to SDK manager. The SDK manager used to come as a standalone tool with the Android SDK files, but now it comes with Android Studio. That is the reason why we installed Android Studio. So in this part, go to Android SDK and make sure again to have the right location of your Android SDK. And in the listing of SDK platforms, those are all the versions of Android uh, that you have to select. The, 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 um, what I mean is that you have to pick the versions of Android that you want to target. So for example, in this case, I've selected Android 6.0 and Android 7.1.1. My phone is using Marshmallow. That is why I've selected that option. So um, that's uh, also what I would recommend to, uh, here. But uh, then again, it's up to you to, with, to which versions you're targeting with your own games and applications or which is going to be your main target. Um, the fact that I pick a marshmallow doesn't mean that the, that, uh, the game is not going to run with other options, but that is just my main building target. And now we can finally move to our phone. So the first thing you need to do is enable developer tools on your phone, activate developer tools. And if you go to settings, you by default are not going to see developer tools. Uh, Google has like a funny way of unlocking this. It depends on your Android model and your version. So you'll have to Google for your own particular phone model and uh, how to activate developer tools. Uh, in my case, I think I had to go to the about Android page in the settings and then tap some number 10 times and it would appear. So it's different on each phone. Um, then uh, once you have that active, go to settings, developer options, which will now appear and make sure that that's on and also make sure that USB debugging is on because that's very important. Then what you'll do is connect your device to the computer. And in here, there might be some issues depending on the operating system and the phone. In best case scenario, you will just see on your phone the option to allow USB debugging, and then you have to accept that. And obviously, if you're gonna be using that computer for development, I would always allow that computer to be to have access, so I would check on that box, but that's just my preference. Um, in Windows, you might be prompt to install some drivers, and if that happens, uh, go go with it. So do install whatever they need you to install, uh, because sometimes the phone need uh, a particular driver to run, and this is something that I've run into in the past. If your computer is not able to recognize your phone, um, you can always just go to that URL and find the drivers for your particular brand. And there's also a link with more information on when you set up your device. One way to check that the device is connected by, by USB uh, for development is to run a command, a command line called ADB devices. The ADB command, the ADB tool comes with the Android SDK. And to be able to run this on the Mac, I provided a link that explains, uh, but the process in is basically to add the path of this command to a file uh, that's called bash underscore profile dot file underscore underscore profile and in the command line in the mac if you open a terminal what you can type is the command that's there which means that we are adding a certain path to the path variable and this this part here that says dot android sdk mac os that needs to be replaced by this whole part needs to be replaced by the path where you've installed your Android SDK. Uh, the, the, the sign means that it's in your home folder. So replace this by the location and then inside of your Android SDK, the location is platform tools. And what we're doing here, we're just saying that everything that is in platform tools, we can just call it from the command line. So after doing that, and after uh, refreshing, reloading your bash profile file, which is explained in this link, 
if you type ADB devices, you, you will be seeing your, uh, your Android device. On Windows, if you just go to any folder in your terminal and you type ADB devices, you're going to have this message that says that ADB is not recognized as an internal or external command. Uh, what you have to do is actually add the location of uh, a couple of folders in the location of the Android SDK for a lot of these Android commands to, to work fine. And for that, you have to go to uh, this computer or this PC and go to properties and then go to advanced system settings, advanced environmental variables. And then you will see a list of environmental variables and find the one that says path. So click on that one, click on edit. And then you need to add the, the folders that, that, I've, that I'm showing you in the slide and you can download as well from the course material. Um, so those two folders, tools and platform tools contain uh, a lot of these um, Android command line uh, tools that, uh, that that people use when doing Android development. In this case, the ADB command is what will allow us to see if the device is is actually connected. So once you've done that and you just type ADB devices, and then you will see that device. It will show like a like a like a long string of numbers and and letters. That is the unique identifier of your device. So you will see it in there. And if you've seen it in there, it means that you are good to go. So that so you are connected to your computer with your phone and your phone is ready for development. So an open-ended challenge for you is basically to set up everything as described in this lesson and get your device ready and listed in ADB devices. So basically you are ready to continue and to be able to run Unity games on your Android phone and after that you can move on to the platform or platforms that you're actually going to be working with the Google Cardboard or Daydream or Gear VR.